The EduTech guys present a conversation from our live coverage of FETC in Orlando, Florida from Thursday, January 25th, 2018. Enjoy the program. Great. Thank you. My name is Jill Hobson. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I work for an organization called IMS Global. Mm -hmm. um, so we're the group that does interoperability standards for okay. educational technology. Awesome. And so what brings you uh, to uh, Betsy? What, one session, is that right? Presenting a session. Okay. Um, we have a number of members who are also presenting. And uh, so it's not just me, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So give us, uh, I'm trying to remember, let me, let me look it well, up just a second. Well, let me, oh, so in, in English, <laughs> what is the interoperability oh, yeah. thing Sorry. that you said. Our <laughs> listeners might want to know. I really tried to, yeah. I tried to grab all the words, man. I really Absolutely. tried. Absolutely. <laughs> and that, I'm glad you asked because um, that word is gigantic and it's not one, especially for our folks in the classroom mm -hmm. that they're going to be really familiar with. And they shouldn't be, right. to be honest right. with you. It's not their job to understand sure. or be expert at that. But what they know about and what I know about having been in the classroom for years myself is the frustrations that we deal with that keep us from using technology seamlessly in the classroom. So okay. things like it taking a, an awful lot of effort to get kids logged into the 20 different platforms yes. that we use. Yeah, right. Or the fact that we have to go to 20 different yes. places to do what we want to do. Uh -huh. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that teachers shouldn't have to, they shouldn't have to worry about. Right. So our technology, uh, we write the, the standard or the agreement that all products can use so that they work together. Think of Lego bricks. You know, right. we, we all expect when we pick up two pieces of Lego, no matter what shape they are or color they are, you can plug them together. Okay. They're just going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing's true when we talk interoperability of technologies that we have in the classroom. Okay. So the idea being that I should be able to get my learning management system, my student information system, uh, digital content that I might get from, from um, open educational resources or from publishers, sure. um, applications that we use in addition to like a learning platform, I shouldn't have to constantly go out to all those different places, nor should somebody have to write uh, custom ways of connecting it. It should just be like Lego bricks yeah, plugged just together. Work. Okay. Yeah. That's what IMS members okay. work to accomplish. Awesome. You're so doing you're all not, that hard you, work for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The members are, because that's also something that's really interesting, which is um, it's not IMS staff who mm -hmm. decide what these things are right. or, you know, how should we do it? It's the members. Members come together, and we have K-12 members, higher ed members. We also have folks in the vendor space that are all members. So over 400 members, um, and they work together to agree on what should the standards be. So one example is something called One Roster. Uh -huh. So this is all about one of the teacher's biggest headaches, which is getting the kids into the applications. I used to be a director of instructional technology. I did this work on yeah. behalf of my staff and students, which is creating all these files and sending them off to the different programs yes. and trying to have all that done. You know, And I had this vision in my mind that kids were going to show up on the first day of school and every kid would be loaded into every program. Mm -hmm. Every kid would have their courses set up in the learning management system. Every teacher, you know, would have access. And we just wanted it all to be working so that it was like, not magic, but that it was seamless and invisible when they showed up to sure. do learning. Sure. Well, <clears throat> that was a lot of manual labor. Uh -huh. yeah. But with one roster, you can do a one-time and again, everything hooks together, so the information flows. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And that came out of K-12 people saying, there's got to be a better way to do yeah. this. Yeah. We know. Well, that's one of the biggest problems that we have. You know, we're, we're, in, uh, we're out of Arkansas, mm -hmm. and one of the biggest problems we have is that whole interoperability issue in that, uh, in, in fact, at the state level, they, cr they had to create a portal that is it's called SSO for single sign-on 
that they had to develop all the back end stuff and make all those connections. And I, I look at you know some of the stuff that Jeff has worked on and I've and that Jeff and I have both worked on together where you have to go into these very disparate systems export this data, massage it over in Excel and Notepad and yep. whatever other yep. voodoo yep. stuff I mean, we yep. have to use. Four different ways. Yep. Yes, and then turn around and export it back out, like you said, in multiple different ways because each of these different platforms wants Want that same different. data yeah. in a different way. Uh, that is ridiculous. And they take it a separate way. And you, you have to FTP maybe something and maybe you have to. Right. And we get into, you're right. I don't need to be writing different code every time. I don't need to be fixing Or I shouldn't should, have to you be. You shouldn't have but to. I do, but. And especially, <laughs> you know, the smaller you are as a district, yeah. you know, the big boy districts sometimes have like programming yeah, programming right. groups or whatever. And that's great, but really is that where you want to put your dollars? As a small organization, you don't even have the luxury to decide that that's what you want to do. Right. You know, your your very few dollars that you could be spending to better benefit your teachers and students has to be spent yeah. on some of these kinds of things. Yeah. So what I'm here to talk about is, hey, why should you get involved in IMS Global? Okay. And hey, if you are interested, we've got a brand new program that we're launching called the K-12 Revolution Program. And this program is designed to help districts think about if you want to get on board and you believe in this, how do you get started mm -hmm. and, you know, how do you progress? What's your right. strategic plan for how to get there? Because the reality is, is that every school, school district has invested right. a lot of money in what you've already got. Right. Exactly and right. you're not going to tomorrow turn the light switch and throw all that out and start over. Nobody can. Right. We, it wouldn't be fiscally responsible to do it anyway. So it has to be a plan and a roadmap that takes time to accomplish. And you need the, the vision, the shared vision among all your stakeholders that, you know, this is where we want to go. And so when we have money and we want to make change, here are the steps we're going to take. Yeah. We're going to do this first, this second, this third. Uh, it, you know, it's really important to do that. So this K-12 Revolution program helps you evolve what we call the digital ecosystem, mm -hmm. all of the stuff you use, but it also helps you revolutionize what you're doing in teaching and learning because you're you're taking all that stuff off the plate. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a great opportunity. Um, we've, we've got it out on our website, imsglobal.org slash K-12-revolution. Yeah. Um, you know, anybody can see it. You don't have to be a member to take a look at it. Um, and even if you're interested, you can just go on. There's a quick little form. You give us a small amount of information, and we'll get back in touch, and we'll meet with you. And You know, you don't have to be a member. We'll meet with you and talk with you and see how we can help you get started. That's cool. So I have a question from the other side, right? So you've got... 400 members, vendors, software developers, etc. cetera. Um, when you, or, or I'm trying to think how to word this so it doesn't sound aggressive, and then again, maybe you guys are aggressive, I don't know. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you approach, or, or do the vendors, I, I'm sure some of them probably come to you. How do you, you work with vendors who aren't already there? How do you work with the vendors who, who aren't, who aren't, yeah. Absolutely. aren't necessarily, and aren't necessarily Maybe they don't even know wanting about it. to go. I yeah. mean, you know, a lot of folks, they love their proprietary systems, and this is the way it is, you know. Yeah, the, yep. We, we, we develop this, and this is how it is, and so you guys come along and say, well, yeah, but we have these other companies, these other folks who are developing things, and we're trying to get this so that it's uniform and easy. So talk about well, working with the Well, there's some cost benefits side. for, for a, a company as well. Okay. You know, really think about it. Um, and we'll just stick with this rostering idea because it's the one we've been talking about. Sure. Which is, you know, for a company that's doing anything that involves rostering, they have to provide support. Right. And they have to deal with what we would call dirty data. Right. So the problem that even though they've told you what format they want it in and they've given you all these, these parameters – it doesn't always come to them in the right way. Right. So they have to deal with that. They have to they have to hire people and spend time and energy and money to be able to handle that situation. Um, and they can save them save money too by having a way that's very standard. That they don't have to create a custom system because their system talks to the system that's sending them information. Mm -hmm. So no more 
no more worrying about the fact that the information is going to be messed up or that I have to provide support in that way. They can really lower costs. The other thing is, is as K-12 districts, one of the things we do spend a lot of time on is helping you with how to do what's called a request for proposal. And again, mm-hmm. most teachers don't deal with that every right, day. Right. And that's okay. It's not their job. But somebody within the organization has to help with the purchasing when you're buying for not just my classroom, but for the district. Right. Um, so this request for proposal is a way of saying this is what we expect the application to do. Also, contract renewal. We mm-hmm. talk to you about what you can do in terms of renewing a contract to say, okay, we'll renew, but within one year, we expect that you will reach X, Y, or Z point, right. And if you don't, then we're giving you notice. Right. You know, we yeah. are going to look out elsewhere. Yeah. Um, does every application get there at once? Remember, I talked about the program being, you know, you kind of have to decide what to do first, second, sure. third. Sure, sure. You, you can't go after everybody in the first step. You know, it's you can let them all know we've, we've made this decision. We're right. going in this direction. But you're not going to try to integrate every system at the beginning. You're going to pick where you want to put your focus and your effort. And some of that may be because there are certain systems that are more willing to work with you than others. Sure. It may be because you know that there's a contract renewal coming up, and so that's the one that makes the most sense to work on. It may be that you're in the market for something new, that you know it's already part of a strategic plan that you have in your district to, to acquire something. Right. Well, maybe that's the one that you start with. Um, Rostering is one of the places where folks usually start because getting that digital on day one is sort of a goal. There's a second piece of that, which is connecting all the applications and content together so that you don't have to go so many places. So real quick, um, we're getting close to time. Um, Top three problems, resolutions for the teachers. Right. Great, great question. So... I would say, number one, it's no more spending time in class with kids on what's my password, how do I get logged in, what's the URL that I need to remember so that I can get in there. Number two, it's that first day of school and every day when you have a new student, they're ready to learn when they show up to the door. You're not having to create extra work for them because they can't do what everybody else in class is already scheduled to do. And then I think the last thing is is about planning for, for learning, and that is lots of us as teachers go out to many, many places looking for just the right resource to help support what we're trying to do. If all of my digital content and applications are connected to one place and I can just go there to look for good content, yeah. it is going to save me time. And it does mean that I might be able to watch my favorite TV show tonight because <laughs> right. I'm not spending five hours trying to get my lessons ready for right. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, 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 and it builds confidence in the district, in the school, yes. and in the, the process and the, and the service. Okay, because here's one bonus. What if you didn't have to go to every application, get the grades for what the kids did in that application, and then go put it back in the grade book? Right. What if all those grades just automatically oh. were in the grade yeah. book? Yeah. It can be done. It already exists within the technologies that IMS Global has, supports and makes. Awesome. That is fantastic. So um, if, our, if our listeners want to reach out and get in touch with you, what's the best way? Well, probably the quickest way is to go to imsglobal.org and fill out the contact information. You can feel free to email me at j-h-o-b-s-o-n at imsglobal.org. You've been listening to a recorded conversation from EduTech Guys live coverage of FETC 2018. For more information about EduTech Guys, visit edutechguys.com. And thanks for listening.